Today's video is about lithium iron phosphate batteries and their inherent fire risk or lack thereof. We're gonna talk about the chemistry, how it works and how it compares to other lithium ion variants. A lot of people are scared about having lithium ion batteries in their house when they're sleeping and charging with solar systems when they're not home. And lithium iron phosphate is considered a non-combustible chemistry. But let's talk about what that means and how these batteries can still fail. So here's a lithium iron phosphate battery. We have four cells connected in series. Now, typically the BMS will manage charging, discharging, and everything else so that the cells stay happy. But let's say the BMS fails. If the electronic switches in this BMS or the MOSFETs were to fail in a closed position, this BMS cannot do its job to disconnect chargers and these cells can get overcharged. And if this was any other chemistry in that situation, you're going to have a fire. Also, if you try to over discharge this battery or charge it when it's frozen, you can get dendrite formation in the cells. And if it causes a short, if it's any other chemistry, it can literally catch on fire. But with lithium iron phosphate, no matter how much you overcharge it, over discharge it, or if you try to charge it when it's really cold, these cannot catch on fire. It is literally physically impossible. They can have a thermal runaway, but it's not self-propagating like all the other lithium ion variants. Furthermore, the temperature that these reach when they're in a thermal runaway state is not high enough to catch a piece of paper on fire. And that's why it's not self-propagating because it can't release oxygen in the rest of the cell, causing more heat to release more oxygen to cause more heat. And that's what happens with NMC or NCA, which is used in cell phone batteries, electric vehicle batteries, especially in America. But those are cobalt based chemistries and they have a self-propagating thermal runaway effect. Calling something a lithium ion battery does not tell you if it's combustible or not. That term is only describing the ions and the electrolyte, nothing else. No matter how much I abuse these cells, no matter what I do, it will not create a temperature high enough to propagate throughout the rest of the cell or create high temperatures. But if I were to leak out these cells and take out the electrolyte, that if given a high temperature, which these cannot create, is combustible. So if you put this whole battery into a fire, it will eventually burn. It has to get through this case and has to spill out and it'll be a big mess. But eventually this can actually combust, but it's not from the cells themselves. It's from an external heat source and accessing the electrolyte inside by spilling it out. So I like to think of lithium iron phosphate safety wise as a big chunk of wood. If you have an external heat source, it can catch on fire, but it's very hard to do because typically these cells are in a plastic or metal case. So if your whole house goes up in flames and you have lithium iron phosphate batteries, they might actually catch on fire. But unlike other lithium ion variants, it's not gonna come from within the cell. That is physically impossible. Now this is a battery and batteries store energy and they can allow current to flow because between these terminals, there's a voltage differential and current wants to flow. And if you put a conductor there and you cause a short circuit, it will create heat. Now typically you have a BMS and it protects from this. And typically people put fuses on their batteries but you can have an internal short and this can cause a lot of heat. And if there's anything around the battery, like a wooden wall, for example, this could actually catch that on fire. This is still a dangerous thing. All batteries are dangerous, whether it's a lead acid, a lithium ion variant or lithium iron phosphate. These store a lot of energy and when it comes out, you can generate lots of heat, which can catch everything else on fire. Typically, it's not the battery that causes the fire. It's how it's wired to the system and everything else. Now with lithium iron phosphate, it is crucial to have a good build quality, especially with the wiring inside. This is an example of a bad build quality. For example, this balance wire is unprotected and this is just not what you want inside of a battery. Also solder joints, if these get really hot, because you know what, these wires for 165 amps are a little bit undersized. And if one of these were to pull out and touch this positive terminal, for example, you're going to have an internal short and that will generate heat and it can melt the case. But usually the BMS will catch it because it has overcurrent protection. But sometimes the build quality is so bad that it can't catch it and you will have an internal short in your battery. Now, even if you have an internal short and it melts the case and it bakes a huge mess, the electrolyte spills out everywhere and people are like, oh my God, it's venting all this smoke. It's on fire. 
technically it's not on fire. It's venting and that gas is very dangerous and that's probably the most dangerous part of these batteries is the gas if it were to vent, but it is not on fire. It is not combusting. It does look awful and this thing looks just disgusting when it's coated with the electrolyte, but it is not on fire. Now let's say you spend extra money and you get the highest quality lithium iron phosphate battery on the market and you're using a Victron inverter and you have the proper size conductors. Well, guess what? Let's say you don't tighten down the main terminals properly. Those bad connections can heat up and they can melt terminals or they can get so hot that they can catch something else on fire next to your system. And that is a very common failure mechanism. In my beginner video, I talked about loose connections. Now how these are dangerous is when they vent. Whatever happens where there's smoke coming out of these vents and you see it coming from your battery or the case is swollen and then you get venting, that gas is very dangerous and you cannot breathe it. In that situation, you wanna run away and get your family to a safe place so you're not breathing it or touching it. That is the most dangerous part of these batteries. It's not fire, it is the electrolyte inventing, which is very hard to do. And if you have a good battery with good build quality, you shouldn't have that issue, but it can always still technically happen. Also, if you were to physically damage this and cause a short circuit, you cause spilling of the electrolyte and that they were very close together enough to ignite the electrolyte, you could technically get this to burn. It would be very hard to do it and it would be a very boring, slow burning flame, but it is technically possible. But again, this wooden desk is probably more dangerous than this thing in that regard. What is more dangerous to these cells is not the cell itself, but what they're attached to. If you have a BMS failure, bad terminal connections, bad crimps, or whatever you connect it to, that is 99% gonna be the problem causer. It is very rare for these cells to just fail for no reason. It is incredibly rare. And BMSs have actually improved a lot in the last few years. We had some really bad stuff, but now this stuff is pretty darn good. This is a cheap budget battery, and I criticize this company for all sorts of stuff, but this is a very good BMS. I don't see any failures on the forum, and they work well. The one thing that I've seen them complain about is them not being balanced, but typically that's from the factory. And with solar systems, people are not charging up to 100%. So it's a very common issue but you're not gonna get this thing causing a fire typically. Now, if you wanna see really bad build quality, check out my really old videos and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. They were horrendous. So surprisingly, even though this is the worst that we've got today, this is like a breath of fresh air compared to what we're used to. Now, what's crazy is these cells are very safe and we use them for stationary storage where weight doesn't matter. But over the years, these have become safer and lighter and smaller, especially with the cells coming from China. In most countries, the majority majority, specifically China, they create the majority of electric vehicles in the world, they use lithium iron phosphate. And the new ones can charge faster than what we fill up with gasoline, which is crazy to me. But here in America, we're using the antiquated, we're using cobalt-based chemistries that can catch on fire. But the rest of the world is charging faster, non-combustible chemistry is more efficient, but we're not. So a lot of people are like, oh, electric vehicles catch on fire. It's like, maybe you should upgrade your technology. Instead of complaining about it and looking like cavemen to the rest of the world, it just doesn't make any sense to me. We should improve our charging systems, our chemistry, and everything else like China and the other countries are doing. But I digress. Another failure mechanism is that these cells, the case, has potential, electrical potential. It's not as much as the main terminal, but it's enough to pass current. And that can over-discharge the cell without the BMS catching it which is not good, which means you can get dendrite formation and cause possibly an internal short on one of the cells, which can cause it to vent for no reason. And even on the cheapest batteries like this one, there's enough protection that this will never happen. But in the past, that was actually a failure mechanism. Also on DIY battery banks, for whatever reason, their cells are touching each other in a way that they're passing current. Again, it's not gonna cause a bunch of heat and a bunch of current to flow, but it's enough to cause an issue. Now, even though this chemistry is very safe, it is still a battery. So how you connect it to your system matters more than anything. You always wanna check the torque specs on the main battery terminals. You always wanna make sure that all the crimps are perfect and wiggle them after you're done to ensure that there's actually a cold weld. And if you can, hit your system with a heat 
key camera after you're done building it and do a load test. See if there's any hot spots. And that's pretty much it. These lithium iron phosphate batteries are incredibly safe. I know where any cobalt based chemistry is on my property at any given time. But with these, I leave these outside. I do whatever I want. Also, a lot of people are worried about the heat with these batteries and causing them to fail. They think that if it's 140 degrees outside and they leave the battery out there, it's going to have a higher chance of catching on fire. That is not true. That's not how these work. These cells can handle any temperature here on Earth, on our planet. Even if you leave one of these cells in the Sahara Desert in the sun for years, nothing is going to happen. You'll have an increased degradation rate, right? especially if it's held at a high state of charge, but it's not going to spontaneously combust for that. It's going to be from a hardware fault. It's going to be from the build quality. That's why we do the teardowns on my channel all the time, because you never know until you open it up and you see the design. Like for example, look at this balance cable. It was attached to the negative and the positive. And if this were to run down from vibration, which again, very rare, but it's possible. It is right here. It is so close. That could cause an internal short. It would destroy the BMS first, actually, especially with the balance lead. But that would cause it to smoke up and it smells really bad and it would freak people out. But the cells aren't going into thermal runaway or creating temperatures that are causing it. It's because you have a dead short and that can happen with any type of battery. All batteries are technically dangerous and the build quality matters a lot. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.